Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In this episode, I'm going to be cleaning some leaves. As you all know, in my previous episodes, I've mentioned that I've moved into this home. There's a lot of disaster happening. A lot of renovations have to go on and then leaves are actually covered in dirt or dust. And some of them have not been fertilized. Some of them have not had pest control over the last few months because the move took quite a bit of time. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you different methods. I'm going to show you some of the plants in my collection and maybe troubleshoot some of the common issues and to be honest this is actually my second time filming this introduction because the original episode was going to be about a full plant rehabilitation but that was going to be too crazy so I'm actually in the middle of filming the episode now and I'm on my succulent section which you will see later on but basically I'm going to go from one environment to another and I'm going to show you different species I'm going to show you how I clean the leaves efficiently because I do have, I don't know, between 500 to 700 houseplants in my collection now. So the purpose of cleaning the leaves is number one, to get the dust off the plants. Number two, to prevent any kind of infection happening, whether it's fungal or bacterial. It's also to prevent pests. So I'm going to try to use an effective method that saves me time to, and I can go through a lot of collection in those given time. All right, so there's this Ficus Elastica that's burgundy and it's been sitting indoors by one of my bedrooms. You won't see that until I just show you the full house tour, but I figured for my indoor plants, I'm actually going to be for my indoor plants, I'm going to be soaping them down because I want the leaves to be incredibly clean. A lot of them has been severely suffering from too much dust and I have not washed my car. I have not washed it in maybe two and a half months. So yeah, but the plants come first. I gotta wash them off first. And it's actually the evening time now. My soap bars do contain neem oil. So I cannot, oh, sorry, it looks really disgusting here, but it's still usable, trust me. It's a soap bar that I've designed. And I'm also gonna show you how I mix my neem oil because I'm gonna spray all the plants down. Well, not all of them, maybe as much as I can before sundown because the best time to do it is when the sun is coming down because neem oil is highly photosensitive. You may actually burn the leaves if you apply it in the morning or in daytime when the sunlight is a bit harsh. We're gonna wet the leaf, leather the soap bar in our hands and go to town slowly gently soak this down and this works with some of the more tougher leaves but it doesn't work with your leaves that are very very flimsy your ferns and things that are velvety it wouldn't work and this soap not only cleans dust away from the surface it also knocks any pest off because neem oil is a very very good pesticide and it's also got very strong antimicrobial properties antimicrobial meaning it's antifungal and antibacterial again this is not for all plants i would first read up to see which plants can work with the soap because some of them can get damaged rather easily. And no, I don't export this, I'm sorry. I cannot export any of my personal care products because they are considered cosmetics and we need export permit for that. And yeah, that's just not something that I can deal with. It's way too expensive. But this soap, I'm gonna link a video up above. Feel free to look it up because I share the ingredients. I'm not gonna share the exact ratio and recipe because that's trade secret. But if you're a soap maker, you would actually know how to make this. Now this is all nicely foamed up. Look at that. I was very thorough with this. This is my first plant. And by the way, this soap is available if you live in Indonesia. It's available on the Tokopedia page. One bar of soap is actually not very expensive and they do last quite a long time. I've never actually finished a whole bar. Usually I lose it before I finish it. But we're going to hold this down. It's going to be very, very satisfying when I do. I'm going to get the underside as well. Alright, it's nice and clean now. Any pests, if, if there were any on here, would have been knocked off and gone by now. And it's gonna prevent any fungal or bacterial infection. It is starting to rain. I see, you see splatters of rain. It's starting to rain. So that is not a very good auspicious start for our video. For some of the indoor plants, it's easy to keep them clean like this. If I had like only 50 plants, I would definitely soap most of them down. But I've got like, I don't know, near a thousand probably. It is more in the back. So a lot of them are just gonna go with the soap and neem oil option. So this is where this plant lives, at least for now. There's a window here, but then this window is tinted. So this plant is technically getting only, I would say low to medium light. 
in this situation and ficus elasticus they can they can live in low light but you do want to make sure they draw between watering and they will start having smaller leaves maybe longer internodes i actually kind of like this to be branching out at some point so like one long stem and that branches out all the way up to the ceiling up here there's a light up there so any light bulb works any led fluorescent light works you don't have to get fancy grow lights the science is very similar of course grow lights you have much more energy efficiency but any light bulb does work so you don't have to splurge on getting grow lights and that being said i don't think i'll be getting any grow light sponsorship anytime soon this is actually one week later because there's a lot that happened between the filming i had some construction and then there was also a plant show that i went to it's going to be next week's episode but look at how clean these guys are that we cleaned last week they're doing really really well here is my upstairs bathroom there are some vip plants here they just happen to be plants that were in my bedroom i just put this on the sledge but i should actually be more selective because this is getting really really good in direct light outside although it is a bit dusty as you can see there's a construction site and i do want to clean off the leaves at some point but it's getting the best light because and you'll hear me say this many times in my channel there is a mirror here this is my shower back there this is a mirror here that's for my like toothbrush and stuff inside the mirror closes there you go and now these plants they are getting the best bright indoor light in the world, probably. This is probably a good hack for a lot of you guys who have like really bright windows and you want to double the light because when you have a window like this, you double the light that the plant is getting. If you close this, the plant is getting only whatever light it can get from this side. Or even worse, if you have a wall behind this, the plant is cut off in half in terms of light. So yeah, really, really love this setup. I may actually put some of my more priority plants here at some point in the future, but we will be cleaning these off soon. I think this one will be soaping it up because it's a good candidate. This one, because the leaves are so tiny and there's so many of them, I will just spray this down with neem oil. There is an aglonema cut glass here. I keep overwatering this guy, but I keep saving it. The best way to rehab aglonemas is in water. You just take a stump. A lot of the roots actually rotted off before I cut off the rotten roots. And look at all these new roots that come out of it. So with aglonemas, you don't want to overwater it. You really want to let them dry out completely. They're very drought tolerant. Some neem oil now. And neem oil solution is actually an integral part of my plant care, plant rehabilitation. It is, again, antifungal, antibacterial, and it helps a lot with literally all species of pests except maybe like those larger ones like grasshoppers snails and all. they don't do anything to them but yeah so this is the neem oil and i actually just eyeball it i've never ever measured neem but you don't want to use too many of it this is how big my bottle is it's about i don't know how many two liters and then i have a bit of dish soap just squirt a little bit and the purpose of the soap is one it actually does help a little bit with cleaning the leaves but primarily it helps emulsify because oil and water does not mix a neem oil and the water that we're going to use to spray so we want them to really blend well and be distributed evenly on the leaves and roots but i also do one more thing this is grow more this is basically soluble fertilizer as i mentioned before i have not fertilized all my plants in about i don't know three three months maybe even more so i'm going to just add a little bit just eyeballing it. I always dilute everything. I prefer to do things very frequently, like once every month or so, but then I always dilute things. And I combine this, and it's actually okay to combine it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Now you want to leave a little bit of room here. You don't want to fill it all the way up because we are going to give it a good shake. If you fill it too full, you cannot really give it a good shake. And every time when I spray, I would always uh, shake a little bit in between sprays just to make sure that things are nice and even. And I guess we're we'll ready to get started. I guess we can start with this plant that we took from upstairs because I want to put it back up as soon as possible. It's actually quite dry now. I 
this plant is actually not very pest prone so I'm not going to be very liberal but I do want to try to get a bit of the underside as well as the top side a lot of the pests tend to persist on the underside and any bit of liquid that ends up in the potting medium will be good for it the roots can actually absorb the neem oil and take it up to the stem and the leaves and then it would benefit the whole plant and not the pests unfortunately the pests that are feeding on the leaves will probably suffer and neem oil actually messes with their hormones causes them i believe constipation it's a slow and painful death now neem oil actually does smell really bad a lot of people don't like it but fortunately i've become quite used to it staghorn fern i treat all my plants the same way this solution works for every plant that i can think of and yes platycerums are actually quite prone to bacterial and fungal infections although they are not as prone to pest pressures and they also love that bit of nutrient that we have in there we've got some hoya this is the hoya carnosa crimson queen this is actually a mother plant i've propagated many 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 plants out of this but i think i'm gonna stop propagating since i closed down my store and then let it grow big and let it flower so this is actually a very mealy buck prone plant I've combated many mealybugs. This is the Crimson Princess. I quite like it. This one has beautiful variegation, but it is much slower growing because th there's more of the white variegated areas. This is put out an all green vine, which I may chop off at some point. And it's basically a reverted green carnosa. And as you can see, the branch here on one side is still variegated, but this other branch from the same vine is green i do have the green one as well it's somewhere in the house i have to find it but you have to really get into the nooks and crannies especially for hoya especially the new growth that's where the mealybugs love to congregate also they can live in the soil but this has been uh, pretty much pass free for the last i don't know year or so i haven't had many issues because i keep treating them regardless i treat this every few months this is a stromanthi sanguini I don't know, not a triostar, but a variegated triostar, I think. Some people call it the Taulia, but I don't really know. Please do comment down below if you know the species. But I've never treated this before since I got it. So this is my first time spraying this down. It looks pretty clean. It doesn't look like it's got any pests on it before. But this is a very good preven pre preventative measure. I'm not going to repot this, I think. It's happy in this current pot, but I'm going to spray down the the meat the pot with a little bit of the neem oil in case there are some mealybugs or some fungal issues down there and i'm all set how beautiful is this philodendron martianum sorry i'm just grabbing plants on the shelf i have not fully organized the shelf but then a lot of the plants here are going to be grown for size and then they're gonna be moved around. Some of, sometimes they're gonna be living indoors. This is a Syngonium that used to be variegated yellow, but I quite like that it's green because it's got a very leathery kind of texture. And the reason why I'm spraying not all the plants now is because when I'm moving all the plants were in contact with one another, it's very easy for them to get past. And now it's also a good time because I'm gonna look at the topsoil. I know that this one hasn't been fertilized or it hasn't been given a pest, pesticide for a while i'll know it because it will be like this purple color so i do use a little bit it's actually not so bad with indoor plants because a lot of these they do have half life which means the plant actually use them up and then they get you basically they get absorbed by the plant however if you have them in like the outside area or in your food you end up consuming the plant and also it leaches into the soil and it harms other plants and living things in the soil so I'm not, again, I'm not very pro chemical, chemical pesticides. They're not the best thing, but sometimes they will do. I will slowly, I don't know, someday maybe if I do really well, I can afford to have an all natural way of, of pest control, I'll do it. But as for now, I combine it. Neem oil is a natural way. And then I use a little bit of the carbofuran as well. This is a philodendron mayoi, by the way. How beautiful. Philodendron, what is this? Uh, Plumanii. I'm gonna do a selfie with it, a weefy. There you go. It's bigger than my face. I'm gonna quickly spray this down. This is not a particularly pest prone plant, although I have 
experienced some past pressures on this before. Spray the back of the leaves and the front. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I might actually, this is a duplicate, but it is so beautiful. I don't know what to do with it yet. There's one in the ground, ground level over there that is a bit smaller. I don't know. This was one of the unsold ones from the export program, but actually they can get very expensive to ship because of the sheer size. This is not easy to sell uh, in the export situation. Look at this large begonia. This is the begonia lady finger. This is potentially the cover for our YouTube video. I don't know, I haven't figured out my cover yet, but covers are important. I always try to shoot something that tells what's going on in the episode. Spray this down. Now I might not really get into the back of the leaves for this one because again, I know that this is not a particularly pest prone plant. I've never had any pest issues with this one. So maybe not necessary. Some begonias are prone to fungal and bacterial infections. This one isn't. Spray a little bit on the media just so that the roots can also take it up. Just in case, I'm done. How beautiful is this? Oh my God, I'm in love. I'm in love with you. It makes a few spots. <laughs> yeah, Skindepsis coriaceus. This is no longer variegated. I think it came from a variegated plant, but I managed to propagate a lot of cuttings out of it when it's reverted to green. I don't know how I feel about this plant actually. I don't know, how do you feel about this plant? Do you love it? I don't know. It looks a little bit like the vanilla planifolia in a way, but I don't know, it's, it's quite average. I'm, we, I'm growing it out a little bit to see if it's got a trailing habit that looks good or not, because I know that these guys, they love to climb. They, they are climbers, as you can see, it's going to climb up. And I don't know how it, it would look when it's like full pot like this in a nice pot. So let's give it time, I'll give you a chance. And again, skin depths are not pest prone plants. You don't need to spray it down way too much. And you know what? It's gonna take me forever if I'm gonna spray all of them down in this table. So I'm gonna start spraying things down where they are sitting now and we, we may not be as close up as we would like to be, as intimate with the plants. But I'm definitely gonna change the angle and I'm gonna move faster because we don't got all night here. This is a camphoria by the way, it's not doing well. And comment down below if you know how to care for this because these stripes that they have, these little dots, they dis tend to disappear. I keep propagating them and they keep disappearing on me. I'm trying low light, I'm trying high light, none of them works. So comment down below if you know anything about this. This is in the Calathea family. And this is looking really sad, this plant. This is an, or I don't know what the name of this fern, but it looks like an ostrich feather. I think they call it the ostrich fern, but uh, I think it was too dehydrated at some point. I don't see any pest pressures. So I don't know if neem oil is gonna bring it back in a meaningful way, but I'm gonna spray this down anyways, just to see, please come back to life, please. I'm not ready to lose. It's such a beautiful fern in its better days. Now I've got a Calathea orbifolia that's doing really well in my, in my balcony area, but this one is still, it's, going, it's got a high chance of doing okay. So I'm gonna give it good care. This is the sign of overwatering right here. I don't know if you can see. I wish I had a camera person. Yeah, this tips here, this is overwatering. Usually uh, if it's on the tip of the leaves, it's water related damage. But if like if it appears in the middle of the leaf or if it's like on the side like that, it's sometimes uh, bacterial or fungal infections. Now this fern, I've been trying to save it for the longest time, but it keeps flopping over. It really does not want to dry out, but I don't know if there's pests. I don't see any pests on it. Maybe this is a more like an aquatic fern that wants to always be moist. So you know what? I'm going to give it something. All right, so I added a little tray below that can store a bit of water. I'm going to give it a little heavy drink. I'm just gonna let a little bit of the water sit on the tray. That's not enough water at all. Yeah, I'm gonna drown you and see if you like that. I have a feeling it does because every time it dries up, it droops like this and it perks up for a little while and then it droops again like this. It's so sad, but it's a beautiful fern though. 
So I think it may have been a bit more aquatic. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but this is actually one week later. It's perked up and actually just filled this tray with water because it drank everything up within a day. So every day I need to water this heavily. I'm reconsidering growing this. Maybe I need to move it into a full moss situation and I need to give it a lot of water. It's perking up like way more. Look at it, it's like standing on its own and the leaves are like upright. So it's doing much, much better. I think that one failed to unfurl, probably because it does need that much water <laughs> to get by. How cute, but look at the detail on the leaves. This is actually a pretty fern. Sometimes you just gotta <laughs> read the signs. They'll tell you what to do if you read the signs. All right, this is taking way too long. So I'm just gonna finish this area and if you see something interesting, I will bring it to your attention. Now you see this, this is bacterial or fungal. I don't know the difference. I can't tell exactly, you probably need more study to show, but this is definitely an infection. It's not from watering issue. And if it's dry like this, I have to leave it alone. But if it's a little bit wet looking, you don't want to touch it and you don't want it to touch other leaves. It's very, very contagious. This one's also really bad. Look at that, the spots come from the middle. And this one, the leaf is ready to come off. I guess I'm going to cut both of these leaves off. But yeah, and I'm going to just spray this down with neem oil. And it's actually very, very dusty. So I may actually hold it down first to get it cleaned up. Okay, so I have this giant fern. It's actually a very common fern. It may be probably invasive. It came from somewhere. I don't know where it came from, but it's now in my collection. It's very thirsty. It drinks a lot of water, like twice a day. I would say heavy watering. And it's gone so it keeps flopping over because it's, it's actually really, really big and it's fast grower. So I might actually let this one go because it is taking too much of my time. It's frustrating to try to spray this down with plant care material with like fertilizer and things. So yeah, it's time to let this go. I mean, oh my God, see? It keeps knocking things down because as I was taking this down, a few pots came down with it. So this is not a good one for my, for my sanity. This is not a good one to keep. I'm gonna let this one go. It's gonna feel really good getting rid of it too. If I had a really big mansion, really big house, imagine if I grew this in the beautiful pot and have like beautiful fronds. Just let it keep growing fronds after fronds and take over the space. It would have been great, but unfortunately, I think I really have to focus my time on other plants. This is about an hour and a half later. I am done. I'm done spraying each one of them. And actually they were a bit thirsty, so I've been hosing them down a bit. I've been watering down the soil level with neem oil. So I've got like, I think seven or eight rounds of neem oil. Look at the mess I made on the floor. I have to clean it up. But it's pretty late at night. I have like the upstairs area that I think I wanna do to get this area done and over with. I did the orchids three days ago. I did the calatheas three days ago. They're doing so well. I love it when they have been sprayed down. Maybe it's a placebo effect but somehow I feel like they're thriving a little bit more, but we'll check on them in a few more days. Usually when you clean the leaves off, they can photosynthesize better and they're, they're protected against fungal and bacterial infections. Bit of a close-up look down below. They look so happy now. Yeah, normally I would do water them twice a day and the evening time would be the second watering, but this time I actually watered them with neem oil instead. And usually I use a hose, but now I basically have to keep refilling so it took a bit of time and I don't know how often I can dedicate time for this. Maybe once a month would have been fun, but anything more than that would be too much. But I think once a month should be enough to keep these plants happy. Everybody looks so joyful now. Well, at least I am joyful. I feel really accomplished. I feel grateful. Look at this area here. It's nice and clean. There were some dust on the leaves, but I sprayed it down hard and spent some time spraying down the dust. I saw the dust leaving the leaves, trailing off the leaves as I hosed it down. So they must be pretty happy. Let's check on them in the morning. Tomorrow we'll see how the leaves look like when they've dried up. They should have less dust than before. If I had a smaller collection, I would have soaped everybody up one by one. But unfortunately, I don't. You know what? I changed my mind. I think I'm gonna be spraying these plants down because this is my emergency unit. There's some interesting plants here and I do want you to see some of them and it's pretty dark now. There's only one light source here which I haven't turned on but it's not bright enough. It is evening the next day and it's a perfect time to use neem oil but then I can't because we found more leaks and some people are fixing downstairs so we won't be able to have any room to work. No, 
Now, before they tore down the house for about three weeks time, it was covered in dust and all that. They uh, op tear tore open this wall where the sink was, it was behind this wall, and then they closed it back up. And now they couldn't figure out where that water is going. The water's not coming out here. It's supposed to. Before the renovation, water did flow in here, but then it's now stuck. So somebody did a crappy job with closing the pipes. So the water has nowhere to go. And now they're telling me they are gonna have to tear it again. I arranged everything already. This is all done. I don't know what to do. If they tear this, this shelves have to go back outside, which was what happened for three whole weeks. I don't think I have the strength to do that, you guys. I really don't. But all the plants that we sprayed down, they're doing really well. This is the next day. We sprayed everything down yesterday from neem, with neem oil. At least I'm glad we got that out of the way because I don't want any pests to be having a party because over the last few weeks, these guys were just in boxes moving around and you know it's very easy for pests to travel between the leaves. No, not everybody looks really good. Everybody looks good. But I think I'm gonna have to pause for the plant care portion. I was gonna prune, I was gonna repot and things like that, but now I don't know anymore. My goodness, don't tell me this is normal. Like I, I know a lot of you guys saying that, oh, you know, I had a really bad move. You know, I had a really bar hard time that moving homes are always stressful. This is something else, you guys. This is not normal. So I don't know, I'm really, really, really frustrated now. I don't know if you can hear from my voice. And I really don't know what to do with myself. I don't even feel like feel filming. I don't feel like finishing this video. All right, sorry about that last clip. I was really on an emotional roller coaster and I don't mean to bring you guys with me into this fight, but they have fixed the problem. It took them three days, so I was not really productive. And so we're gonna continue with our plant care today. It is 4 p.m. now and I'm going to spray down this area with neem oil. And I think I'm just gonna bring my camera with me. I'm gonna, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I kind of need, two hands to spray. So let me figure this out. This area here is very, very narrow. So I don't know if I can fit a tripod here, but I'm gonna do my best. This here is a baby anthurium moronense. There's gonna be a lot of anthuriums in this room. I'm sorry about the pounding noise, but this leaf right here, that is a sign of bacterial infection or fungal. I'm not sure, but it comes as a letter C. As you can see here, it's very different from an overwatering type. Uh, symptom and this new leaf is actually quite healthy as long as these two leaves are not touching this should not spread over and of course it can be spread by misting by pests by wind and all that good stuff and also another thing that you want to make sure is that this is dry like the wound that you see here you don't want to touch it when it's wet because you can actually spread it to the next leaf very easily but one way to remedy that is of course to so let me get this ready it's just a spray it down Spray it down with neem. It's, it's got very, very good antimicrobial property. So it's gonna prevent the spread pretty much. There is a Warroquianum here that's not doing so well. I think this is a bit of overwatering, as you see that, and a bit of yellow right before the dryness. But I'm going to water this a bit because it does look very dry. And a new leaf is coming over here. And if you see here, right in the middle of the screen, there's a little leaf that's coming. So this actually is actually the leaf that we use in propagation. I believe it was in my Anthurium or Aquanium propagation video. This one's taking a, a while though. So I'm counting on a new leaf to look a, amazing. Anthurium SP Limon. And even water propagated plants, you can spray them down. They can still get pests as well. This is an, I don't know, the thing is missing. Papillilaminum, I think. Yeah, I think that's what, I don't even know what plants I have. It's, it's horrible. I have too many plants. So I'm gonna spray this down and it's now all dripping wet with this natural goodness. There's a bit of nutrients as well. I just to remind you guys, it's a little bit of soluble fertilizer in there. So it's gonna be good for some of these plants because they haven't been fertilized in a while. This Aglonema rotundum alce with a uh, pictum tricolor. That's, it's a hybrid. This is actually very, uh, pest free, very f infection free. This is a very easy plant. It's one of those hybrids that definitely got the best of both worlds. And it's beautiful. It's got the, the traits of the both mama and papa plant. This one's flopped over, hang on. Yeah, this one's, this one was lying on its side. I do have this already in my landscaped area, although I do like the look of it. But you know what? I'm just gonna let this go because I have so many of them already in the, in the front yard. Uh, I don't need to be hoarding this. I'm gonna let this one go. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a very, very slow growing plant, by the way. It's a Peperomia optusifolia variegata. Look at these cute Philodendron gloriosums. They are a little bit, but they are not very much prone to pests. 
and they're not as prone to bacterial and fungal infections but they can I've, I've had them have it, have it before and I can even spray a little bit on their topsoil just in, on and their patio of course then what else do we have here we have the skindapsis that is supposed to be variegated there's one variegated leaf the rest of the leaves are not so this is not for plants that are not pest prone as you can see the back of the leaves they're usually quite clean i normally don't bother but of course i just moved house so I, you know what i might as well just do it once but normally you don't really have to be so diligent with spraying it every time so you have to choose your battle wisely this is a phaetonia this is actually also not very pest prone in my experience but I do need to save this. I need to propagate this and save this because it's gotten leggy. And sometimes I do this after I spray them now so that the neem oil can spread a little bit around them. This also used to be a variegated skindapsis, but it's now completely green. Again, with this skindapsis, I normally don't spray down the back of the leaves. I don't find the need to. Look at this super cute Syngonium milk confetti. It's tiny. Look at this. This is the size of my finger. Look at how cute they are. Oh my god. I've got one downstairs in my green wall. This is the plant that I'm currently hoarding. So whenever I have a duplicate of the plant that I don't know what to do with, I'm going to call it hoarding because that is what it is. This is a beautiful skindapsis. I believe jade satin variegated. I don't know. Yeah, it says jade satin tricolor. This is from my second plant. He gifted this to me when I did an episode at his place. So thank you so much. This is a beautiful one. Here are some Hoyas. This is a Hoya carnosa compacta variegated. You gotta really get to the crevices of this one because a lot of mealybugs can live there. This is a very slow growing plant. It'll grow like one centimeters every few months or so. Although I might have underwatered it, it may not like to be in the terracotta pot. I've noticed that some of the leaves have dried off. Do you see this crisping bit of the leaves? That's dryness. String of hearts. My goodness, they're very, very mealybug prone. And they dry out really fast here. I do water them once or twice a day. But I haven't seen any mealybugs since I moved here. Hoya obovada. I know we're not gonna do Hoyas, but there's a lot of Hoyas here on this shelf might as well. Some more string of hearts. Really make sure you wanna get to the... Oh my god. Oh yeah, so it's grown down, down the shelf. <laughs> I used to be bothered by neem, like it would disgust me because I don't like the smell of it. But you know what? It's actually very beneficial for your skin and hair. And I'm now used to the smell. With the shedias, you really want to water them down. And then you see these, the, each of these vines, they will have aerial roots. Let me see if I can, it's so hard to do with one hand. <laughs> so you see uh, those aerial roots down there, they can take up moisture from there. And also like the fertilizer, if you have some fertilizer in your solution. Look at how beautiful this is. This is a slow growing. The Shidia, I adore it. That's why I have multiples of it. I have duplicates because I'm always propagating them. This is a Plaminii Nero that we, we tried to export it, but no one wanted to buy it. So yeah, I think one of the reasons why, uh, I guess, is that there's probably a, a drop in demand for our aeroids, but there's also a huge spike in shipping costs and it became such a heavy, heavy burden that I don't think people wanted to import them in or maybe they're just bored of me i don't know maybe they're no longer <laughs> interested but oh, oh this is a duplicate actually this is a duplicate of that one i just noticed it's the same plant this is what happens with me sometimes i notice that i have some of the same plants without realizing it here's a piper porpophyllum Purple, I, don't know, I don't know the name's going to be on the screen but I, I feature this quite a bit on the channel i talk about it quite a lot some more dishkidias you should probably miss the shidias like this. Every, this is how I water them, the amount. But they really love this solution here because there's a lot of nutrients in there. And the shidias are pretty heavy feeders if you ask me. Let's bring down all these hoyas. Now there's a plant, it's kind of leaning downwards, but it's very light. Uh, the leaves aren't heavy at all, so I think it will not tumble down. But it was so dirty during the move. You see that? It's covered in dust. And then this is probably not a plant that you want to soap up either because it's got such delicate leaves. This is a Lea Conchina or something. Conch uh, the name is going to be on the screen. It's beautiful and it's got a burgundy form, but of course you can't see the burgundy over this dust that's sitting on it. So the best thing I can do now is just spray that down with neem oil and then some of that soapy water and the neem will also help clean the leaves. 
Of course, it's better to, to do that and then just like violently spray down the leaves to knock off the dirt. And down there, I don't know if you can see that, that's overwatering in the middle of the screen. Those two leaves that are yellow, it's a classic sign. So basically, it's got a crisping edge with a little bit of yellow around it. But usually, it's at the tip of the leaves. We are actually losing daylight really fast. So I'm just gonna quickly go through with you the plants that I'm gonna spray, maybe a little bit of troubleshooting, and I'm gonna turn off the camera, I'm gonna spray them down. I'm gonna do this Stefani Erecta, it's gonna need a little bit of nutrients probably, it would be nice to spray them down. This is a Philodendron Plumanii that is not doing well. Look at how light colored the leaves are. This is probably chlorosis. Probably not enough nutrients. We did cover this in my purging video and I said in a video that we're gonna fertilize it and today that solution will contain fertilizer. Although I would repot this and add some uh, nutrients in the pot as well. This may also be too bright because this is sitting on a higher shelf really really close to very very bright indirect light. So maybe it was a little bit shocked. It did not like that. So it's given me leaves with very little chlorophyll. Let me see, what else do we have to work with? Another Dishkidia, this is a trouble one. This one grows so slowly, I killed most of it. This is the last one's remaining, but it is putting out a tiny little growth here. So it's, it's probably a heavy feeder, probably, and it hates water. That's why it's in a terracotta pot and an aeroid potting mix. This one I'm gonna spray down really well, the Hoya Compacta, because a lot of pests can live here, but it's largely doing well. But yeah, with this one, you really want to go to town with the neem oil. Anthuriums, actually I sprayed them down because they can, again, uh, get a lot of fungal and bacterial spots on the leaves. This is a particularly healthy one. I keep an eye out for this. This is a crystallinum hybrid. Let me see what else do we have. This, even like a stump like this, you could also get away with spraying it down because neem oil is an excellent fungicide. It can not prevent, but it can probably reduce the incidence of rot. And also the bit of nutrient can also help this plant along. Let me see what else is there. These are Ficus Audrey cuttings. How cute. Spoiler alert, I have a video on this coming soon, but I gotta clean the leaves. What else? Yeah, I'm gonna spray everybody down here basically. Everybody. And this one is struggling. This Peperomia caparata pink lady. I think it might be dried out too much because it's in a terracotta pot and a very porous potting medium. Sometimes I've seen pest here. This is why some of the leaves can come out really troubled like this. It could also be a pest pressure in the soil or like on the underside of the leaves, but I don't see any right now. But yeah, if you have like weird growth like this, where the leaf should have been this, well, you have like I don't know, it's just weird stumpy leaves that are curling on itself. It's sometimes spider mites or mealybugs. And the neem oil solution really, really will get rid of them. Got some beautiful aglonemas down there. They don't really need a lot of spraying down, although they can be fungal infection prone sometimes, but I have not really had that issue with them. They're very, very easy going, but I'm gonna just spray the top of the leaves. Now this here, this is a little bit of a tip. This is baby bilitai, variegated. And look at all these crevices where the water could actually pool. So what happens when I spray this down or a plant similar to this, let's say this anthurium, you see water can actually stay right, right on top of this area like a pool. So whenever I hose this down, I would blow out the water with my mouth, just blow and so that no water is pooling here because the water is left here to dry. This is gonna cause some of these infections as well. The water that is not dried out too fast enough will cause bacterial and fungal pathogens to land on it and party. So the leaves literally have to dry out as soon as possible. And then there are more anthuriums here, forgetty eye. There's a bunch down there, all going to get the, right, the same exact treatment. But yeah, for these ones, especially some of the more crinkly ones, I do blow them out every time I'm watering them. There's some troubled plants here, so they will all just basically get a dose of that spray and they're gonna be so happy. So yeah, I guess look, look at that. See like the water is actually pooling here where the leaves are curling. They don't like that. Where possible, I'm. you can shake it off like Taylor Swift. There's more than one way to skin a cat, I guess. But this is a Philodendron luxuriance and it's still on the way to recovery. So I do need to spray this down a little bit more carefully. Yeah, it's being infected by something. Here's a sneak peek at my very, very messy study room. 
We actually do have some succulents here, so we're gonna bring them out. So I'm gonna have to spray them down because some of them have been out here for a long time. I have not treated them, but a lot of succulents and cacti are actually very prone to mealy bugs. I know that these Hoya should definitely be sprayed down because they are very mealy bug prone. We're not going to deal with these plants. They're gonna be in a separate episode because these plants actually trail down. They trail all the way down to the living room. As you can see, everything's a mess. All right, so here are the succulents and I've got my neem oil ready. And actually for this solution, for the succulents, I'm using far less fertilizer. Oh my God, my brain froze up for a second there. I'm using a lot less fertilizer than before because cacti succulents, they don't really need a lot of nutrients. You can actually burn them easily. And there are actually special formulas uh, or special fertilizers for them that you can mix. And actually it's advisable to use something that has a more high K ratio or the potassium for them because they are more of a trunk heavy plant that they don't need that much nitrogen, if you know what I mean. So I'm just gonna start spraying all these down. And in fact, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of repotting. There's not gonna be a lot of heavy repotting. So yeah, because since I took them down from upstairs, I might as well just do that. I also have a Hoya Bella that is in the same area and I, it does need to be repotted. So I'm gonna spray this down with the solution first just to make sure there are no pests. This is very prone to mealybugs and you usually see them in the new leaves rather than the old leaves. But this one might be getting a little bit too much light because as you can see, the color has been a little bit lighter. So what happens when you put a plant in a place that is too bright for it? I'm not sure exactly what happens. It's possible that the chlorophyll is like damaged by the sun rays. That's why they are a lighter color instead of the, of the dark, dark green. It's also possible that they are producing less chlorophyll because they don't need as much because they were getting enough sunlight. So uh, you can also see there's a little bit of sun stressing here with a little bit of pink. Hoyas tend to sun stress, although Hoya bellas are not known to sun stress. So this is getting a little bit too much light, but it's the only place that it can be for now because I do have an AC on in that room and they love it a little bit temperate, not to the point where it's like snowing or whatever, but they do like it a little bit cooler. They like lower humidity. So I'm gonna be repotting that actually. And here is a Hoya Leonoris. This is also very prone to mealybugs here. And they also love to be in an air conditioned room. This one's a little bit scraggly looking though. It used to see better light of day. I think they used to have chubbier leaves. All right, I kind of want to find a cool pot for it. And the first thing that, that came to my mind is this little guy here because it's gonna look like it's brains or it looks like he might have had a really bad perm. Let me see. It does need a slightly bigger pot only because I think it's trying to grow out of its space. I would love to one day propagate this. Let me see, how do I, this is cute, no? What do you guys think? This is kind of cute. All right, this is a quick impromptu repotting. Ugh. Not looking good, okay. I didn't really think this through very well. Hang on, let me get some cacti succulent potting mix. I have a video on this. You want to check it out, but it's basically made with, let's see if I memorize this. It's with Akadama, which is good for bonsai, but breaks down over time. There's perlite, vermiculite, there's a bit of burnt rice hull. This thing's not in focus, is it? Bit, tiny bit of worm casting. Uh, did I say perlite? I don't know. I, I'm not very good at multitasking, so I can't do two things. I can like film and do some potting up. At the same time, okay, hang on. Let me focus one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Try not to squish this. This is what the potting mix look like. It's actually quite beautiful. That's why one of the reasons why we selected this blend is one for its beauty, because cacti are such slow growing plants. We need to have them look kind of good. But then it is also one that drains really fast and it absorbs and releases nutrients pretty much in line with what a cacti and succulent would want. Now, I don't know where my tweezers are, but I'm just gonna use this as a chopstick for now. Let's see if I can repot using the chopstick method. Sorry, Mr. Cacti, if you're not happy with this arrangement. Let's check out the root. That's nice. It doesn't look too wet. No mealy bugs, so that's nice. That's good. Put it, put it in here. And I'm gonna start with, it needs to be a bit height actually, hang on. And there, okay. Now this is a perfect height. Let's see, how do I want this to look? Do I like this? Because like they're such slow growers, you really want them to be in a perfect 
position. Otherwise, you have to stare at it for years. Let me move it forward a bit and fill in the back. Yay. All right, that is not too shabby. <laughs> Looks like this person had a haircut. It's so cute. I love it. I don't know what cartoon character this is, if it's plagiarized for something else, from something else, but this is from Thailand. All right, next I think I'm gonna do the Hoya Bella. Let's check out the roots. I've been meaning to repot this for a long, long time. I never got around to because I have to water this every, like twice a day almost. It's so thirsty, it's so brute bound. But this is quite beautiful. I just get mesmerized when I look at roots. And I have this grown in my general purpose potting mix, even though normally for Hoyas, I would recommend to have them grown in a aeroid potting mix. But the Hoya Bella and the Linearis are two such exceptions. And this is actually very top heavy. It's heavy on one side. So I don't know, who, let me see. I might find it a cover pot that is a little bit heavier that can support its weight. And this here, this is what I had in mind because this is still connected to my air conditioned room. And then I can just place it here and it's gonna trail down. I don't know how far down this will go. Subscribe to the channel, stay tuned if you wanna find out how far or how long the Hoya Bella can go, but it is getting pretty good light. From here, it's getting artificial light. It's also got a light up here. It's got a strip light that's giving it light. So it's like bright indirect light. It's actually way up there and it's actually not positioned. Amazing, I tried to fix it but it just wants to flop over to one side. But give it time, any plants, if you move them, their leaves will start facing the right direction. Ooh, and there's, don't judge me by this, there's going to be a full episode on how I would design and create this, I don't know what you call it, this trailing wall. Ooh, and I actually forgot to mention, this is super important, but about a week ago, one of those nights, I was really stressed out. So I ended up spraying everything down with neem oil and soapy solution like we did in the video earlier on. And I forgot to tell you about it, but here's an update. So this is actually filmed one week later. Look at all the new growth that are coming out. So they really, really respond well. I think there's a new leaf for the alocasia. I remember there not being so many leaves. I think one more just opened up between now and then. So the plants really respond well when the leaves are being cleaned and they're being treated for pests and fungal and bacterial stuff and then this one actually took me a lot of trips i remember for the whole front yard it took me about five spray cans worth of sprays this is not good i think because there's such a clearing now look at that above there's all this open sky this is actually getting full sun and this is what sun bleaching looks like when you get full sun they lose uh, their green they get burned like this and in, in severe cases, look at that, that's burnt. I'm so sorry, but this is like the only one like, look at that new leaf is coming out. So I'm really counting on this stomatophyllum to perk up. Please perk up and provide shade <laughs> for the plants that need it most. But the other, the, the other plants are okay. This alocasia can actually take direct sunlight, but maybe it was a little bit shocked because it was moved here very suddenly. So it is losing a little bit of that chlorophyll. You can see it's a little bit lighter green. This is what happens when you move plants to a direct light too suddenly. But I think they will live. They should be able to live. This guy actually can adapt. I've had it grown in a bit of direct sunlight before and it used to do well. That Tensevaria, look at that. That hasn't done anything for a whole year in my old home because it's living in like deep shade and it was probably overwatered too. Now it's living in ground. It is getting rained on every day, but it is getting a lot of good direct sunlight. So everybody's doing well, everyone's growing. That caladium is having its time of its life. I remember it was very tiny when I put it here about a month ago. And then this cordyline that Colocasia is taking over too. That used to be very small. Cute, I'm very excited for this area. But you know what, I noticed one thing. Like I, when I was landscaping this area, I was not considering beauty. I was not really choosing the plants that I wanted to because I was actually exhibiting behaviors of plant hoarding where I just wanted to use all the plants that I have and utilize them. I kind of forced a lot of plants to be here. That is not a good behavior, but these plants actually have a lot of meaning for me. Let me check on that Calathea. Yeah, that, there's a Calathea babies. Look at that, they're coming out. <laughs> So a lot of plants love these grounded situations. They absolutely thrive in this. But anyway, back to my point, like if I had to like start over, I would have probably done this differently with different plants. 
uh, in a different style. I might even do a whole bromelia thing. But I have such a deep connection with my plants and I cannot part with them. I just wanted to hang, hang on to all of them. So they are all forced to be here for the time being. And check on that ZZ plant. It's getting pretty low light actually. It's way under. So you need to grow up fast. Grow up fast so you can catch up. Now I've separated some plants that are living indoors that needs cleaning up. This Anthurium viterifolium is really really in bad need of cleaning up. And then there's so Dracaenas over there that needs to be cleaned up. And these ones we can't soap up for obvious reasons. We can't really soap all these. And then that fern, we can't either. But then these guys are gonna get soaped up. Let me show you how dirty they are. There. And this one, for example, this is the new Syngonium leaf. This is a Syngonium batik, if I'm not wrong. And it's living in water. It's been living in water and rooting it. And then the dirty ones are here. Look at how nasty. Oh, I can feel the powdery dust on my hands. And this is very dirty too, this Aglonema. It's normally shiny and clean. So we, uh, with this, you can actually take a wet soft cloth and gently w wipe off the dust. But soap will be so much easier. It also take off some of the pest pressures if there were any here. So we're gonna be doing that. All right, let's go with the easy one first. I did have this soapy water neem oil solution. So it's also a good pesticide. I'm gonna start spraying this down. I only made like a third of a bottle because I don't think we're gonna be needing that much for these few plants. Now, of course, I did notice there are a few more plants around the house that may need cleaning as well. And you really want to get, with Dracaenas, you really want to get in there and get the grooves because a lot of things can hide in there. A lot of dirt can accumulate. Pests can also hide in there. And I want to spray down the medium as well. Let it absorb some of that neem. Usually when I do this, they will perk up. It will perk up so much. I mean, technically you all now get the underside as well, but let me try. I don't know if I have the patience today to do Yeah, you should, you should lift it up. It's not that hard to get the underside as well. Let me get this fern since it's so small while I'm at it so I can finish the whole bottle on the Dracaenas. What a gorgeous fern. It's very, very dusty. It's been inside the whole time while the workers were working. Okay, and shake it off a bit too. All right, I've got really bad news. Okay, first of all, that banging over there is too loud. I've got some bad news. So my hose broke down. Unfortunately, I, this is like my life turning upside down again. It broke down, I lost one of these turny things and it's like, I don't know, it's super messy here. I don't think I'll be able to find it. It'll be a lot less stressful if I went to the store and bought a whole new one. Like, this is not cheap by any means, but I'm just gonna buy it because it'll make my day a lot better. And then it's because it's late, as you can see the sun is coming down. I don't think I'll have time to film. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the store, buy that another one of those pumps, and then hopefully one of these days when we're clearing this area, we'll find that little thing that we're missing. But unfortunately, I'm not gonna show you this because it'll stress me out if I have to like hold this off for another day. I have a lot of things to film, a lot of things to do. So I'm gonna close this video now. Trust me, I'm gonna clean these. It's gonna feel very satisfying. I will wish that I was able, look at this new growth. How cute is that? So as you can see, this is getting very good light. This is living outdoors, but suddenly it shot up a really long node here. This is because it's been living indoors in lower light during the last two to three months. So this is what happens when you put a plant in a lower light, they will reach out quite a bit and the new leaves are probably gonna be a little bit smaller. So as this plant grows bigger and bigger, you can actually read over the, you know, just by looking at the information, at the length of the node and the size of the leaves, you can actually tell how they were doing at a certain period of time. How interesting is that? I can't wait to clean this, but again, I'm gonna run to the store. Before that, I'm gonna close this video. And then, yeah, sorry about that. I know some of y'all are probably dying to watch me clean these up with soap. Some of y'all maybe not care about it. But anyways, yeah, for my sanity, let me fix this. And I guess I will let you go. I will see you in the next episode. Bye.